Round and about, but it has not come near our tabernacle. Let's give him thanks. Let's appreciate him. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise for causing us to see another month, oh Lord. For causing us to see another day. Lord, for bringing me into this Passover service. For enabling me to be here to partake of your table today. Lord, I give you thanks and praise. Lord, I appreciate you, faithful Father. Most high God, I say thank you. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I say thank you. Thank you, Most High God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse 22, he says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Praise the Lord. This connotes that this is the city of God today. We have come to our own spiritual Mount Zion. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray that, Lord, let your presence fill this assembly, both actually here and online in Jesus' mighty name. Let's ask for the presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your presence today. Let your presence come down. Let your presence go with us. Every part of this service, let your presence go with us. Lord, I pray, let your presence go with me, O oh Lord. Father, let every heart that is gathered both here and online, let your presence reach us, O oh Lord. Let your presence reach your people today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We are also going to ask the Lord to gather multitudes into his presence according to Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. The word of God says, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Praise the Lord. We are going to say, Lord, bring many to this service to hear your word and to gain their rest in Jesus' name. Let's the, ask the Lord, Father, bring many for service today. Gather multitudes to service today, O oh Lord. By the online platform on Facebook, O oh Lord, gather multitudes. Lord, in, in the sanctuary, O oh Lord, in the overflow, fill this place, O oh Lord. Fill this place, O oh Lord. Guard the multitudes that they may hear your word and they may gain their, entry, uh, their rest today, O oh Lord. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. At this juncture, I'd like to remind everyone that has come with a testimony. I know the Lord has not left us. Kindly step to the, to the Sunday school down there. There's a pastor there waiting for you to record your testimony. Praise the Lord. As we are doing that, we continue in prayer. Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse 3. The word of God says that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord that a man live. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for the word today and say, Father, send me a word from your mouth that will bring to life every part of me that is dead or dying. I'll take it for clarity again. Father, send me a word from your mouth that will bring to life every part of me that is dead or dying. Now let's pray for ourselves. Father, send me a word, O oh Lord. Send me a word today. Send me a word that will bring to life every part of me, O oh Lord. Father, you say that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth, O oh Lord. Father, we have come to gain life again today. Lord, send me that life. Send me that word, O oh Lord. Bring to life every part of me that is dead or dying, O oh Lord. Send me your word again today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We are going to pray for the servant of God that has been prepared for the service to deliver the word. Matthew chapter number 11 verse 27. The word of God says, All things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal the father. Praise the Lord. We're going to say, Lord, reveal to your servant today the will of the father that he may teach us today. Let's pray. Father, reveal to your servant the will of the father. Relieve, reveal to your servant, O God, your will today. Reveal to your servant the will of the father that, I may, that he may teach us your will. That he may teach us your will, O Lord. Reveal it to your servant today. Thank you, faithful Father. Now let's appreciate him because he's said to do his wondrous works. 
Father, thank you, Lord, because you are set to reveal to your servant. You are set to bring us back to life, oh Lord. Whatever is dead or dying, Lord, you are bringing it to life. Father, thank you, most high God. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we give thanks. Hallelujah, Lord, Amen. we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Tunakuwa budu buwana, unayetenda mambo makubwa. Hallelujah. Ambayo manadamu hawezi ya katenda. Inuwa mikono yako jiunge pamoja nasi. Tumuinuwe mungu wetu ambaye anatupatia kila tunachoki hitaji. Yeye mwaminifu kwetu kila siku. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Wewe unatenda mambo buwana. Unafanya mambo ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kufanya Unatowa faraja ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kutowa Unafanya mambo ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kufanya buwa Unatoa uponyaji ambayo Mwanadamu hawezi kutoa Mwana haufana nishu Na kitu yingine Haufana nishu Na kitu chochote Mwana unafanya Oh, Father! 
morning giver of life we lift your name higher this morning open your mouth and lift his name higher the one that have lifted you above the billows of life the one that have lifted you above all challenges the one that have lifted us and have opened the gate of the 11th month in our favor we lift your name higher great God receive all the glory Lord in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped him. Dear Lord, our hearts rejoices this morning for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have granted every one of us again to appear before you this morning. The Bible tells us they go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appear before the Lord in Mount Zion. Thank you for the dimension of strength that will be released upon our lives in this service. Receive all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. New glory. Hallelujah. It is my joy this morning on the behalf of God and his servants to welcome every one of you to this Sunday morning worship service. Those that are online and the ones actual, you are most welcome. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate the Lord for the triumphant entry to the 11th month? Amen. I'll be leading us in our session of prayer of expectations this morning. I read the book of Isaiah 26 and verse 2. Isaiah 26 verse 2. It is the first service in the 11th month and it is also our Passover service. Hallelujah. It says, open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keep the truth may enter in have you entered yes. have you sure you have entered yes. or oh, you are still in october yes. who opened the gate for you no. your ascari no. your strength no. that's why you can't afford to close your mouth as we give thanks we say father we thank you for opening the gate of the 11th month and granting us a triumphant entry Father, we thank you for opening the gates of the 11th month and granting us a triumphant entry. Lift your voice this morning and appreciate the Lord. Father, we thank you for opening the gates of the 11th month. 
the gate is not shut against me. The gate is not shut against you. The gate is not shut against our family members. You have opened the gate of the 11th month in our favor. You have granted us a triumphant entry. Oh Lord, we give you glory. We lift our voice this morning in adoration to you, oh God. Thank you for opening the gate of the 11th month. You have ushered us into the 11th month alive, strong, and healthy. What a mighty God you are. Receive honor, Jesus. In Jesus' great name, we have given him thanks. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 3. He said, and it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake, and the children, uh, Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. On the first day of the 11th month, the Bible says, Moses spake to the children of Israel. Today is that first day that God is said to speak to us according to the Moses, through the Moses of this house. We'll be saying, Lord, cause me to hear what you have commanded concerning me in this service. Cause me to hear all that you have commanded concerning me in this service. Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord commanded him for them. There is a word that God has commanded for you. You have to ask the Lord, Father, cause me to hear. Cause me to hear what you have commanded concerning me in this service through your servant. The worst thing that can happen to you is to walk into a service and walk out without hearing your own word. Father, cause me to hear. I know you have commanded something, oh God. There is a word you have commanded concerning my life there is a word commanded for me oh god let me hear it open my ears to hear that word the word that you have commanded concerning me in this service that prophetic word on the first day of the 11th month oh lord my own word will not pass me by thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed genesis chapter 4 and verse 15 Genesis chapter 4 verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. You are here to receive that indelible mark. We say, Father, set your indelible mark of protection upon every worshiper in this Passover service. Set your indelible mark of protection upon my life and every worshiper in this Passover service. Go ahead and pray. God that set a mark upon Cain, Lord, set your mark, your mark of protection, your mark of protection, oh Lord, upon my life, upon every worshiper, set your mark of safety, your mark of deliverance, your mark of protection, set it, O oh God, upon every worshiper in this service today. Set your mark, the mark of your blood, the mark of exemption from all forms of evil. Ask the Lord to set that mark over you. Let him set that mark on your forehead. Set the mark of touch not, the mark of come not near. Lord, set that mark upon my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Why not lift up your voice and give him glory this morning for that mark that will be set upon your forehead. Lord, receive honor, receive adoration for the sent word for me on this first day of the 11th month. In Jesus' mighty name, please, you can have your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. It is testimony time. And the Bible speaking in the book of Psalms 107 and verse number 8. I'll read up to verse 9. And the Bible says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord 
for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 9, for he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. There are people today that God has filled their souls with his goodness. They are here to share the testimonies of God's goodness. I want us to put hands together as I call them forth to come and share their testimonies of the doings of the Lord God in their lives. I'll call Sister Annette Kirigia and Brother David Omondi. Please, wherever you are, come forth as you share your testimonies of the goodness of the Lord God. Please go ahead, your name and your testimony. New glory. Amen. My name is Brother David Omondi. I want to thank God for his protection in my life. This week I was sent on an errand and was on a motorbike. And out of nowhere with a car hit us. I could imagine all manner of things, me falling on the motorbike. But I want to thank God for he protected me. I, I didn't fall down. I wasn't hurt. Uh, it's only the motorbike that was, was somehow damaged. I give glory to God. I believe it's because of such a service of Passover like this. I give glory to God. Put your hands together for the Lord God. It is the doing of the Lord God that covered him. Amen. My sister? Your name and your testimony. Just move closer. God bless you, church. I want to give God all the glory for my life because he's been a good God this far. It's been, uh, I joined BCI in 2008. And when I came, my life was not as it is today. I came when I'm jobless. And I came when life was hard. But God has been faithful. I remember there are times uh, Pastor John st standing in front of me then was a deacon. I used to be given food in the church. So God has been good this far, and I give God all the glory. I want to testify in the line of my career. I work in insurance industry, and uh, for, uh, for, about, for the last uh, about 10 years, I used to work in one organization, Canon, and then they shut down the retail life. And from there, we had to uh, get other places of employment. I did not source for a job. I was called for two interviews. That was almost four years back. And I settled for one company that I am still today. And uh, as I was going to that company, I went in a position of a unit leader position. And uh, the first year, that is a 2018, uh, 20, 2018, late 2017 to 2018, I used to be like performing. And somewhere around the corner in the late 2019, early 2018, 20, early 2019, things were not working out well. But I want to give God, I don't differentiate Travelo, Vanna, and BCI Breakthrough Chapel because to me they are all my parents that I've done, I've been taught to, and what the word of God has worked. So one service we came, and uh, I cannot remember the word that was preached, but I remember it was Travelo. Okay, I got the letter, but I came on Thursday service, but I was so disturbed. I didn't like pray so much over the letter, but when that Saturday was a Travelo of Hannah. And when we came, we were told to walk around the church with our issues before God. And I walked around with that letter. Believe you me, friends, what came thereafter was something I did not even uh, pray or imagine. A promotion came, having gotten a letter of uh, being someone. I give God all the glory. I know it's a, it's a testimony I have been sitting on for so long. But today I decided, God, give me the boldness to testify. <laughs> And then uh, in insurance, there's nothing like, uh, okay, at least where I work, we did not stop working. There's nothing like there's a pandemic, so we are not chasing numbers. Numbers are a normal thing. You've got to continue chasing. The targets are still there. The, the, the numbers are still there. So what you do is probably they were slashed a little, but the numbers were still there. You needed to chase the numbers. We just found a new way of doing business, which is online business. And now you had to look for customers online. So uh, during that time, things were low, things were low. So going again, uh, by the time we were going to September, when we were resuming now, the churches were opened and all that. Again, the, the someone came over later, now in this new position, having been there for over a year. 
by this time I was wiser. I thank God for the life of my partner. He was doing a, a fasting. God has it given him grace to fast. He was doing a three-day prayer and fasting. So I just told him, this is your issue. And of course I prayed. And when we came to church, it was our month of enlargement and restoration. And I want to give God the glory. Truly God restored me. What I did in the month of September as a team of Mombasa One was more than what we had ever recorded previously. And I'm here to return all the glory. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord God. And now to your last testimony. Okay. The last testimony, uh, the, the other two were briefly to summarize. The last testimony cannot be without the second testimony, which uh, we, when we were in Makilingo, Papa used to give us one test. He said any message can come from any corner of service. So this day he said, you're a cacao without a tail, any soda you see, you want to take any coca-cola, you don't save, you don't do anything. So then I had two purpose in my heart, to go back to school, uh, to save, to go back to school, and to own a car, because in insurance, a car is not a leisure, it's a tool of trade. So I got, I was able to save and be able to raise some money, and when I was going back to school, I decided that I need to pay a year up front so that I do not give up. So as people are going, I want to thank God I have finished my four-year degree course, I do not take it for granted. I give God all the glory. And a car, I want to thank God because he did bless me with a car. I never testified, but he did. And God has protected us. There has not been any accident, any issue on the road. Even when I could not drive, God still helped me to do. I give God all the glory. Finally, the issue of business. Uh, sometime last year, there was a service here that went on, and we had an invited guest. And he said those who are interested in going into real estate, they should raise their hands. And I raised my hand so confidently, trusting in God. I didn't know how. How, but I knew God was going to do it. So I took a step of faith and rose my hand and I came up front and he prayed for us and he said that when God does it, we should testify. So uh, we, we, I, I saw a place that I, I, I thought of this thing and I really wanted to hone something. It doesn't matter the, the sight of it or the, I mean, not the, the sight, the, the amount that it brings me back. But I just wanted to trust God to be in real estate, to own something. So I shared with my partner who, ble who gave me his blessings and we called Papa, we pray, he prayed for us. And I want to thank God that today I am... By God's grace, we own a house that is a rental. We give, <laughs> we give God all the glory. Finally, Thank you God so much. You. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord God. I'm sorry. She, she, she wrote three testimonies and she has uh, shared four. I want us to go back to God in a seated positions and give thanks to God. All these are the doings of the Lord God. Just give him thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for these testimonies. Father, we return to give you glory. For protection, Father, we say thank you. For promotion, we give you glory. Father, receive all praise. Receive honor, receive adoration. We return to bless your holy name. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, mighty King. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a moment to invite BCI choir. And before they come to minister, we're going to share the word of God. Uh, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1 and 2. Uh, remember the children of Israel had crossed the Red, uh, Red Sea. So now we are crossing over to the new month. So it says, Then say, sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He, is, uh, he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare a habitation. I will prepare an habitation. My, my father's God. And I will exhort him. So uh, put your hands together for the choir as they come to minister before God. How many are sick and tired of being sick and tired? God's servant once said that it is, it is the intolerance of the now that creates your future. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I will not settle for less. Settle. Repeat, somebody say, I will not settle for less. Settle. Put your hands together for Jesus.
There's more that's found in you. Mm -hmm. And we will never settle for less. For we know there's more that's found in you. We will up your hand and appreciate your God this morning. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Open your mouth 
let him know you, are, you acknowledge him for waking you up this morning. For causing you to come into his presence. Bless his holy name. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we exalt you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. Covenant keeping Father, thank you for bringing us to 11th month of the year 2020. Thank you, Lord. There was no sight of today in the month of April, in the month of March. Doom prophecy went on that this time many will not be alive. But we are alive. We are healthy. We've lost nothing to him. We've lost nothing to Corona. Your family are intact. Your children are intact. Much more, you are alive. We give him all the glory. Just wave your hands unto the Lord and open your mouth and say, Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. We appreciate you. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. I welcome each and every one of us to the month of November. And the team of this month is my season of divine harvest is here. My season of divine harvest is here. My season of divine harvest is here. You will have a harvest from the Lord. You know, in Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 22, among many things that verse of scripture says, it says, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Seed time and harvest time shall not cease. It says, why the art remained? Seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. For the year 2020, this is your season Amen. of harvest. Many of you have invested prayer into the kingdom of God. You have invested service. You have invested love for the sake of Christ. And he said, whatever any man give for the sake of his kingdom, he said he will receive it life here and that which is to come. I welcome the supernatural hand of God Amen. to bring your own harvest. Amen. This month, your harvest shall be a reality. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, the rain over your head shall be a rain of harvest. Amen. I can't hear your amen at all. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please let's put our hands together as we take our seat. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. Like I promised this season, we'll be looking at the place of kingdom stewardship. Kingdom stewardship. And among many things that we have been looking at, we are trying to give every one of us an understanding of what kingdom stewardship is all about and why we needed it. Now in 1 Peter chapter number 5, 1 Peter chapter number 5, and from verse 10, which was our anchor scripture for the month of divine strength and settlement. It said, but the God of all grace, everybody say all grace. It said, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered a while makes you perfect, establish strengthen and said to you and said to you God is aware there are unsettled cases around our life and God will say to you amen. I can't hear your amen. amen I can't hear your amen, amen. God will say to you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have just had testimony. We've just had testimony. 
<laughs> I don't care what anybody say about BCI. <laughs> if it is not working in your life, it's working in other people's life. She said, I've been here since 2008. And he gave the pastor who was then a deacon a testimony. As he testified, as a witness. He said, I used to be giving food. I used to be what? Giving food. That means she used to line up for food. And I used to tell them, today you may line up, don't be ashamed. It is a temporary state. Praise God. I said, praise God. The same person who used to line up for food now own a house. Amen. I thought if you are not a witch, you will clap for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. She's talking about a car. Amen. You know why nobody can confuse me about this God of this of, of, of breakthrough? I know where he picked me for. Amen. That is why some of us are very difficult to be confused. Because we cannot deny that this God is not real. The happening around us testify that he lives forever. Praise God. You will be the next testifier. I can hear your amen. amen. God also will make you to be any wages amen. while you are sleeping. Amen. One of the benefits of the every landlord is that there are any wages while they are sleeping. And that is what they call wealth. The real wealth is when you get to the realm that you are not involved and yet your account is credited. That's the real wealth. You are not reporting to anywhere a situa, but your account is credited. That is the real wealth. Amen. I say amen. amen. And God will bring every one of us there. Amen. You also will soon become a landlord. Amen. I can hear your amen. amen. I say you will become a landlord amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, but in our state of suffering, I explained that to us in the previous teaching. Wherever you are now, as far as God is concerned, you are suffering. And this is said not to humiliate you or to despise where you are. But he said it incomparable to where he's taking you to. He said the affliction which is whatever state every Christian is, as far as it is concerned, it is considered as a suffering compared to where God is taking you to. Now, at that time, uh, our sister was not the only person possibly lining up for food. And there were people who doesn't even have where to line up for. So it was a state of suffering. But we cannot compare it to today. So, there is what to do to guarantee God continuous settlement day by day. Because he said, after you have suffered a while, not permanently, after you have suffered a while, he will settle you, he will strengthen you, and he will establish you. But there is what you must be doing in every phase that is considered as a suffering stage. Compared to where God is taking you to. Amen. Amen. And we identify that one of the things that we ought to be doing. To register ourselves for divine strength and settlement. Is kingdom stewardship. Kingdom stewardship. Exodus chapter 23. I'm just paraphrasing to connect to today's service. Uh, Exodus chapter 23 and I read from verse 25 to 26. Now he said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Now listen, as of the time God was speaking this word, the children of Israel were still under bondage, they were under suffering. They were under suffering because when you check your Bible very well, it began by telling them what to do in chapter 8. In chapter 8 verse 1, it said, 
God told the children of Israel through Moses. He said, tell Pharaoh. He said, and the Lord spake unto Moses, go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may, they may serve me. Let my people go and let me see whether they will serve me. Let my people go. The reason for freedom is for service. But we have perverted this. We thought the reason for service, I mean, the reason why God saved us is to make money. No. We have invited life upside down. You are saved to serve. Come on, let me hear your amen. amen. Say, I am saved, I am saved. To, serve. to serve. Amen. You were not saved to look for money. No. You were not saved. You were not saved to establish a business. No. The business is a platform for you to serve. Many of you who employ people, you are serving God. It's only you don't know. If not for your grace, the grace of God upon your life, 10, 15 family will not have food. So you are serving God. Praise God. But we thought we are doing business. And therefore, we do not add the attitude of service. That's not, you always think that you establish business to make money. No, you establish business for this simple reason, as a tool for you to, re to render service to humanity. Hallelujah. Somebody was insulting Bishop Oedipo, and I like the way Nietzsche answered him. He said to that man, he said, if you are given a thousand years to live, you cannot achieve what Oedipo has achieved. He said on his employment list, it's over 36,000 people. One man. So you don't own a company to make money. We need to reprogram you. That's why you are struggling. You own a company by the election of grace to offer your generation an umbrella. Look, look, at, what, look at how stupid African leaders are. If you are familiar with what is happening in Nigeria and Kenya as well. Jack Mann sent food, relief, and we are still in it. This mask you are wearing, how much was it when Corona started? It was 100 shillings. I bought it. How much are they selling it in Nairobi now? 10 shillings. Even here, thank God they have not backslided. It's now 10 shillings. So what happened? Were more factory created that time than now? No. We just have people who don't know the reason why they are in existence. You are alive and the grace God has put on you to serve humanity. To serve. You see what Nigeria youth are doing. And that's a warning for the rest of African leaders. To serve humanity. Until we get it right, things will not be right with us. You are saved to serve. He said, go to that city where you are hated. Even horses were saved. Horses were preserved to serve Jesus. Horses. That's why I say, let everything that has bread do what? Praise the Lord. You are not safe to work in an organization. If you are living for your purpose, you will not be stealing the money of your company. You will not. We are safe to serve. And Jesus explained it. He said, look, in the world, this is their mentality. The leader there lord it over them. He said, but for me, it will not be so. Who among you want to be great? Let him be a servant. And who among you want to be the chief among the greatest people? Let him be the servant of all. We are saved to serve. We are saved to serve. Come on, tell your neighbor. We are saved to serve. Say it one more time. So begin to check your life. 
How many people are able to look, 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 you are not fulfilled by the suit you wear. <laughs> you are not fulfilled by the car you drive. You are fulfilled by the impact your life has on people. That's why, you know, I, I gave you, is it here? Oh, I don't know where I was teaching. Was it in Malindi? I don't listen to every noise in the market. There are people that talk about me, I don't even answer. You know why? I look at my life and their life. I look at how many people benefit from me and how many people benefit from you. You answer too many people, including the people Kibaki call Lumbafo. Our auditor that can shows that since this ministry started, we have paid more than 10 million for workers. And you have not, you can't even feed your wife and you want to talk to me. No. You can't even feed your house and you want to talk to me. So Nietzsche said, he said, that man, even if you are given a thousand years to live, you can't meet Oyedeku and his impact. Started a university just the other day. And the university in Africa is number four. In Nigeria is number one. Within a short time, he has one university, second university. They are on the third one. And you dare wag in your mouth? And the man talking, it's not even, he, he had a divorce. He couldn't keep a woman, beautiful woman. <laughs> there are people you don't listen to what they say. Just look at their life. So the man said, you, you, you are correcting no Edeko on marriage. He has been married for 40 years. You, you can't even keep a wife. You can't keep it. The man has no job. Your life is not about what you wear. Your life is about who are you serving. Amen, Please speak this today. That's, that's what is important. How many lives are touched by your life? Christianity must, we must be deprogrammed. Your definition of success is wrong. Success is not somebody riding a car. Or the white thief are successful. Because they are riding one before the owner catch up with them. Your definition of success is were you able to serve. Because God is not going to judge you by the number of houses you build. But he's going to judge you by how many lives. That's why he called you his co-laborer. His co-laborer. The church have to, we have to rethink. Our definition of success is wrong. Nobody care about the car you drive. Everybody care how you affect their lives. The Lord is on your side. Are you catching what, are, what we are talking about? We need to redefine our definition, especially in church. For success. We need to redefine it. It's totally wrong. If it is based on material things. Absolutely wrong. And Jesus came here. To show us an example. It is my prayer. That this word of today. Will penetrate into your life. Let me tell you. Even in your house. The most recognized person in your house. Is likely not to be the husband of the house. The most recognized person in every house is the house help. He has access to all the good food if you are not aware. Whether you like it or not, before your husband tasted it, he has tasted at home. When you are not at home, they own your AC and lie down on your bed and have and have a little <laughs> a little snack <laughs> and have a little siesta on your bed. They lock everyone and play that music that you don't let anybody touch. And they dance. I had a house help sometime. I had to beg her. I said, please, when I'm at home, off your radio. So that I can hear. Because he, her radio feel everywhere. including. <laughs> so you can now imagine when I've gone. They become the, the owner of the house. And it's in line with kingdom service. <laughs> a servant will always be the greatest. Praise God. <laughs> I said, praise God. I pray for you that you will live a meaningful life from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. So at every stage of your life, make sure you are a servant. And you are serving in the kingdom. I want you to rethink whatever makes you not to serve has deluded your life. 
No matter the reason you have. And we stop on Sunday by saying kingdom service which I define as voluntarily rendering a service. Voluntarily. Not coercively. Nobody is coercing you. Dedicated heartedly Rendering service to God and his kingdom for two reasons. For the purpose of advancing his kingdom and bringing your life to eternal fulfillment. That's how I define it. Now, and we said so many things, but I want to go straight to the point for today. Now, kingdom service, hear this. Is therefore not about you. That's why we got it wrong. That's why we pick offenses. It's not about you. It's a service you are voluntarily rendering with a dedicated heart for the purpose of advancing the kingdom and to Establish your own fulfillment as part of the body of Christ. So it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. And I, I will show you why it is important for me to emphasize that. Because those are the reasons why you get, a, you get hurt. You know how many people have eaten my food, wear my clothes, wear my shoes, and they call me a fool. You see, if I'm offended in them, then I thought me doing it is about me. That's why you get, get offended. Somebody is sought to inquire and you stop going there. You see, you think the place is established about you. It's not about you. When you have this mentality, then you will have a stamina to withstand the challenges. The Lord that the God said to me, never you give money to people according to their size. Give it. That's why many of your offerings never answered. They never bring forth fruit. Because you give to them according to how they are. It's this one, you need 50 shillings. No. You give according to whom God have made you. Hello? Did you understand that? That's why you are going to give somebody shoe. You are looking for the one that is half torn. No, 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 no. God gives to us according to his size. You see what God gives to a drunkard like you and me before we were saved. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave one child that is stupid. No, he gave his only begotten of son. Stop giving people in a way that you are despising them. Give to them according to who you are. Let somebody wear your shoe and cry. You know why? He never believed he could wear that side. That is when you are a blessing. It's not when you look for something that is nasty, that, that is disturbing your house, and you turn the, the person to Kibarani. You say you give it to him. No. You give the best. You give the best. You give from where God has elevated you to. Not the way you evaluate the person. That's not the covenant on prosperity. The covenant on prosperity is said, Abraham, I will make you great. And out of you shall all the nation of the... Why will you give money to a beggar and he's not smiling throughout the day? And not that it's your best. But you just give it to her because she's a street boy. You just look for one ten shilling. No, when I put money in the hand of street boy, I want them not to fight. Because I know they are going to fight. It is something heavy. You give from your point, from your point of elevation by the grace of God. You serve from the point of your elevation. There are many people here who are great singers. But you know why they didn't join choir? 
this choir is small. And they don't know God made them big so that they can make the choir bigger. They don't understand what I'm saying. But they are waiting the day Ron Corneli is coming. That's the day they want to join choir. No! You serve God from where he has elevated you from. So it is not, that's why it's not about you. It's not about you. Until you get out of this level, you can't serve God. Because you will be offended. You will be offended. You will be offended. It's not about you. That's what will help you to serve at various capacities because you know you are a value adder. You are what? A value adder. A value adder. Sometimes I go to my lady, there are just less than 30 people. But I was not called to come and show how eloquent I am. I am called to come and, to come and impart people with the one I know. So whether they are 10 and God even made it so, so great. Jesus said, eh, wherever two or three. You see that? God of heaven we move because of three people. Amen. Not because of a thousand. I read that scripture over and over. That means if you are more than one. Which if you even look at scripture. Even if you are one, he will still come. Because he said, I will never forsake you nor leave you. You have to understand all these elementary things. That's why many people are waiting where a church is big, then they will serve. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom. Amen. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's not about you. It's about the kingdom. Tell him powerfully. And that led me to the next point. I was telling my my message this day, are in point form. That led me to the first point. That means kingdom service or services vary from ministry to ministry. Kingdom service vary from what? From ministry to ministry. I won't talk to you much. Because when I talk to you much, you forget. From ministry to ministry. I want you to get this. Because those are the bone of contention. What I am doing here is not exactly what God's servant Pastor Lai is doing. Because we don't have the same assignment. You can't ask a surgeon to behave like a tailor. They all use scissors, but different sides of scissors. If you lie down and a tailor is coming with it. <laughs> You, can, you say you came for eyes operation and I tell her enter with his black big scissors. <laughs> don't you know your eyes will go completely? You don't need a prophet to jump down. <laughs> they all use scissors, but not the same way. Now, I want to register this in your heart because this is where you have problem. I found people come to this ministry, order, their steps are ordered by God. I can see it. But when they come here, they believe they should change here. No. There is a grace upon your life that God wants to add to here, but not to change here to you. That's, that's the truth. The work of God varies. Because those are the petty, petty things people are arguing about in that church. Why did the pastor allow them to cover their head? My assignment allow them to leave their head open so that they can see the beauty. If God say cover your own, go to where they cover, there is no trouble. Huh? Oh, Makenga. If, if you want to, you see how we had raster. This one have plated one. Another one have different side. This one leave our own open. My own calling allow it. But in case you don't believe in it. You don't fight me. Go to where you believe. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've been invited. James Nganga many years ago when he was in Mombasa, he invited me. He said, Pastor Wale, come to my crusade. I told him if I come, I'm coming to sit. He said, no, I would like you to greet the people. I said, I don't know how to greet them. You know why? I can't talk to people who are not concentrating. 
I may slap them. <laughs> in, have you been to a crusade ground? Somebody is in the crusade at the back. He's smoking. So he has grace. But me, I will be distracted. I will believe that he's smoking my God. I told him I will come, but I will just see it. I already there was in his crusade in Nigeria. I was on the platform, but I didn't greet anyone until I left. Because some of the things they are doing there, I can't comprehend. I don't know why you have to de be delivered before you are slapped. And it doesn't mean the people doing it are wrong. I'm not their judge. Do you understand what I'm saying? I see some people vomiting. And they say it's deliverance. For me, this is dirtiness. <laughs> you don't vomit demons. <laughs> it's a spirit. But for them, they believe when they vomit, something happens. And who am I to question them? The church today is full of arguments. Okay, me, I will stay with you. I'm vomiting. I've gone. I want to eat my food after service. <laughs> you are the one who knows what you swallow. <laughs> I don't believe in that. And I didn't say it's not wrong. I have a better tool. I cast out the devil by the word of the Lord from my mouth. If I can change your heart, I will change your behavior. Or you want me to start slapping you? Because actually some of you have offended me. That, <laughs> I thank God I don't have that ministry. Because when you now fall, I have opportunity now to slap you. <laughs> I went somewhere to minister and they were to receive the Holy Ghost. And I said, now rise up and receive the gift of God. Stand up and they stood up. And as I stretched my hand, about 17 of them fell. I sat down. After a while, they are not speaking in tongue. So I said, can you get up? I said, get up. And they got up. I said, okay, listen to me. He said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I went through the teaching. The next time we started, they were not falling. They were speaking. After the service, I said, now you have done what I'm called to do. That you're falling down is not part of my own agenda. I am not called to fall people down. And those who are called, God knows why he called them. You use knife to do many things. You can use it to kill a man. You can use it to eat on the dining table. The, the, the vision of every man of God differ. You have to understand. You have to understand. Somebody asked me the other day, why do your pastor, they wear, and you, you wear suit when it is hot. I say it's part of our calling. As a matter of fact, when we started, I went to Dubai and bought suit, complete suit too. Jones, I'm sure you were around that time. I bought suit for all the staff, complete from Dubai. Because it's part of the ministry. Somebody said, why did you stop? Because some people cannot even wash it, so I stop. <laughs> I bought two, two pair, black with stripes and ash color and gray. I saw the suit after so many months. I said, okay, I understand. Praise God. Because our ministry is to show the goodness of God in our appearance and in our heart. That's why he said, he said you are, I'm called to restore number one power. With your power, you create your domain. In your domain, you are a honorable person. And in your honor, you are a dignified personality. I've never changed and it will never change. It can only be refreshed. Praise God. So service different from every congregation. The first time I went to, I went to serve, it was in Rambonki Crusade. I have to be taken through training on how to do counseling when there is a crusade. It's different from the one you do in church. Your wordings and everything is different. Because you don't even know where the person lives. So the highest you can tell him is to go to nearby churches, not your church. Otherwise you lose them. So every work, therefore, requires training. Every kingdom steward, we have to go through training. Training to match up with his assignment.
sometime we have an MP here who was formerly of Tabeta, I guess. He came to our church four or five times and, uh, and I was watching from my office through the CCTV and I saw him serving. So I told them to go and call him for me. So I asked him, Musimiwa, what are you doing? He said, no, I'm just serving. I'm helping people. I said, no, you can't help what you don't know. No matter how sincere you are, you cannot help what you don't know. I said, so you want to serve? He said, yes. I said, okay, go through believers class. You can't help an institution you have no trade. They are training. You can't. The light said he want to be a doctor when he was finishing school. I knew she's not going to be one. Because when he see blood, he can cry. Ah, if a doctor is crying about blood, would he die of lack of tears? <laughs> when there's a blade caught the mother, he will be crying. I say, ah, you are a doctor. <laughs> you are very far. And as he was growing up, I look, I look at her behavior. I knew he was wired to be a lawyer. I don't have a doubt about it. I knew. Because he could judge me and judge the mother. Without blinking her eyes from small age. Daddy, what you have said is not correct. I didn't choose that career for her. So every worker has to be trained. Because your assignment is specified. You can't be a backbiter and survive in this church. Because everybody has a story. Including you. <laughs> Here is a house where people are comforted. We are called to restore people. People who have suffered. So if you are a storyteller, you can't survive here. If you know what I know about you, you wonder why I've not used panga to remove your head. <laughs> this heart of Wally, if I give you one day, you will die. Because you won't greet some people. But you see, a prophet, a prophet, people are calling to that, cannot know what I know about people. They will prophesy it. <laughs> it takes the heart of a teacher the heart of a pastor is different from evangelist so every assignment has his own requirement or specification God is definite in his calling he does not duplicate himself it expresses himself in different way you can't be a backbiter and survive in this world. listen to me you can't be a beggar and a user of men and survive here. The environment will choke you. You are all here, precious, wonderful people, loving people. How many times have I called you and tell you I have not paid the school fees of my child? If you are here and I've ever done it, tell me. I don't need to call you. My ministry comes with dignity. If God will provide, I don't have to be his advertiser. He says his eyes is not shut. I was, I, I, was, I was almost in fear because the light is, clear, is clearing in her school. I thought when she's clearing, they will call me and say, you are owing more than 500,000. And I won't argue with the school. But how it happened, whether the school gave her scholarship being a, pastor, a daughter pastor, I can't tell. Sometimes I'm supposed to pay 200. When you get to check her account, the check her portal, they will just find 100,000. Sometimes 50,000. God gave me the children. They shouldn't be your body because you have your own children. Please listen to me. If I'm begging you every now and then, how do I tell you that God will provide? Say, so I'm the one who knows him as a provider. He should provide for me before he reach you. So there are certain things you have to know about any ministry. If you are in choir and you are not smart, the other day, one girl sang in choir. I won't tell you her name. I, where I was seated, I look at the hem of her skirt. I told mama, why did you allow people to wear this kind of skirt? You know, somebody is wearing yellow and his hem with black. To you it's nothing, but to me it's everything. Because the world are watching you now. 
Another one where one skirt, we is a guest artist. We invited her and he wear one guest, uh, uh, one skirt as if somebody who is going to Konago Street. Before we finish the service, four people have called us. To brand, you have to be definite. And ministry is all about branding a group of people. Pastor Mr. Suleiman Kura called Mama. Hello, Ma, um, Mama Wally. How are you? I know this is not you. That person, who did I say? Father, before we finish, Abuja called. That girl that led praise in your church. Because every ministry has an identity. Every, and when people cannot see what you stand for, they begin to question you. So we have to tell, I have to tell the artist not to sing. I think I suspended her for one or two services until she under, got our message very well. Because I'd rather let you go than to spoil what I'll be building over the years. I brought you to add value, not to devalue us. Some of you wonder why we don't bring artists. No, it's, church is not an entertainment platform. Church is a pursuit of purpose. I brought one young man here. He get up and was leading praise. That is the last time he sang here. That's how I learned from Oyedeko. If I bring a preacher here and he's talking nonsense, that's the last time you will see him. Because I have an assignment. If I bring you to repair my car and you want to sit in my sitting room, you know you will not come again. Praise God. So, what am I trying to say? Wherever you will go in the war and you want to serve, not only here, take your time to know what they stand for. If you are not wired for that, get out here. That's what one man said in Nigeria. You are not a bad person, but you are not meant for that place. The people are not bad, so there is no trouble of fighting. You just stand for different things. So let everyone look for what he stands for. That's the counsel of Paul. He said, let every man abide in his calling. Even within the church, you have your jurisdiction. How many times did you come here and one of the pastors is preaching to you and say, where is Pastor Wally? He says, Sunday school. Your children will cry that day. That Jones is the one teaching here and I'm the one with those children. <laughs> you know, children report their teachers. I don't know where anointed has gone. It's ever reported by children. And I told them they should remove him there. I don't know whether he's still there. Teacher anointed. Teacher anointed. It's okay. And if I went there, it would be worse than anointed. <laughs> so you can imagine they are complaining of anointed. Who doesn't talk more? Imagine me. Because I can't be talking, you are climbing chair. <laughs> At will. No, you will. <laughs> Jesus made that dot to sit down. Who are you to? <laughs> Come and say, I hear. So I don't tempt myself to go there. I don't. Have you ever seen me in Sunday school? Not, never. <laughs> because when I look at you, you will unirate. <laughs> never. I don't do Sunday school teaching at home. <laughs> that who is the father of Abraham? And I'm asking you, you are sleeping. <laughs> I wake up. I say, who is the one of Abraham? I say, Raila Joseph. <laughs> Ask my children. I rely on the teacher in church to teach them. <laughs> we all have different grace. Papa D, delight. They were God filled with the Holy Ghost and they were led to Christ by one lady. I call her. Hello, how are you? I've been in this. And it's a believer's class teacher. I say, these are my two children. Please, I leave this office for you. I want you to minister to them. They got, what is her name? Huh? Evelyn. I said, please, let me minister to them. Because you don't sambasa salvation. It has to be received. You don't inherit it from your father. The only person that God filled with the Holy Ghost among my children under my teaching was Deborah. And it was in a class. We run the program for teens church. So please understand that ministry determine the mode of your service. And not you. And I don't know why people take it so, so as if it's a right in the church. When you are employed, don't they take you through induction? 
where you are employed. They tell you code of dress. When Chase Bank was in operation, you can't wear broken suit. Hmm? Peter, I can see you nodding your head. Am I right? You can't wear broke ever, brother ever. You see how good his suit is. They don't want to know how much you bought it. If you walk in Chase, you can't go to the bank like this. Is this man not smart? He's smart. But according to their own objective, he will not meet up. They will prefer him to wear the price of his shoe for the complete dress. But the same. It has to be complete suit. No broken. And people obey. But when we come to church, we come to behave like a scaramog. It's all about you. All about you. All about you. You can't serve God. It's not about you. It's about his kingdom. And his kingdom differ from place to place. There are churches, if they invite me, I do tell them what I believe. It's true. A pastor invited me this time. He met me. He put up appointment. We met. He said, I want you to come, Pastor Wally. I've seen the grace of God upon your life. I want you to come and minister in my church in Magongo. I said, fine. He said, and this is what I want you to do. What is it, sir? He said, I want you to raise money for me. I said, I don't do that. I don't do that. He said, you don't do that. But I, told, I was told when you are a winner, you raise a lot of money. No, people brought the money. I don't, I don't raise. I said, if you want to raise money, you are the one who should raise it by yourself because you know your sheep and your sheep know you. I don't raise. And he pick offense. This day, if you see me, do as if he doesn't see me. What will he remove from me? Greeting me is wasting my time. <laughs> Greeting somebody greeting when somebody doesn't greet you, thank God. He's wasting your time. Don't you wait and shake hand in the, in the this day of Corona? <laughs> That's saving my time. He got angry. I told him the only thing I can come, I can come to your church and teach them and leave it to them. Because after I raise the money, I don't know what you will do with it. Because it's too direct. <laughs> somebody asked me to give you to him. He passed here and saw your car. And he came to my office, Pastor Wally. I want you to, to, to give me that your church for seven days. I will raise five million and then you give me, you know, I will raise seven million and, and then you give me two million and you take five million. I say to do what? I ask him. He might be watching me because he watched me. You know, I'm a, like, I'm a naked wire. I prefer to talk to your face than to talk at your back. He might be watching me now. I say to do what? I say, do you know the people I'm talking about? He said, they have money. I've seen their car. Do you know how many cars is on mortgage there, on loan? <laughs> do you know how many people borrow car to church? Do you know wife who carry the husband car to church? I know woman, even if they don't own anything, it's our car. My, my car, my husband car. If I, those one who respect the husband, say my husband. Otherwise, they say my car. <laughs> I say, I don't do that. I don't do that. And I told him to his face, who told you that he have seven million, seven million? I said, maybe that means you have another power you are using. I'm looking for where to give you something. And somebody says, coming to milk you. Won't he milk your blood? <laughs> when you don't feed a cow and you are milking it, what will you get? You will get blood or pause. <laughs> Praise God. So we need to train. We need to train. We need to train. The work is well defined. No ministry is a blanket covering of the gospel. Every ministry has a portion, a role to play. The hand can't say it's the whole body. Praise God. As, have you tried to pick something with your leg? Then you know that even though it looks like the hand, it cannot perfect, can perform effectively. The Lord will give you understanding. So every ministry have their idea. Now, let me, let, me, let me discuss some of the secret that are some of the things that are going on. You know, every congregation have a complaint. Do you know that? And every disciple has something they don't understand. That's why Jesus takes his time to explain. And that is what I'm doing right now. Of recent, among my pastors, there was an argument that I issued. They are not bad people. They are good people. But the truth is this. Any of my pastors that criticize me, 
slap him on my behalf. Because he, he wasn't there when I received the vision. Slap him. Tell him to stop backsliding. There was an argument that why do our pastor collect offering? They are not bad people, but they don't know what I know. They have not heard what I have heard. They don't know where we are going. They don't know why I do what I do. So what you can do politely is to approach me and ask me. That why do our pastors collect offering? That some even felt it is not right. And I laugh about it because they don't know what I know. And it's not that they are dull-headed. You don't tell what you tell your wife. You don't tell the house hell. If you are a proper man. You send your wife to the house help. So they are my, they, 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 they are my assistant. God cannot speak to them before he speaks to me. You say, well, you say, when we have proper money, when our money comes, is it student you will also collect it? I have exposure more than some of you in ministry. A bishop can't offer a winner. I that you are seeing, our job is to count offering. We are talking of proper money. You put a student to see to open an envelope and see fifty thousand dollars. He will say, "Father, if this is the only sin I will commit, <laughs> forgive me. I have to take this one. <laughs> I have to take this one, Lord, and you will understand." So you can't, you don't, I, 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 was, I was joking with one of them. And I said, well, I'm going to bring it to the church to, so that they can also learn. <laughs> I can collect offering. Hello, senior pastor can collect offering. You know why senior pastor can collect offering? Mr. So Gutu, when you give me money, do I send us to come and collect it? <laughs> All this pastor, them pastor. When they give you offering, do you call anybody to collect it on your behalf? So what's wrong if you collect on behalf of God? Well, Kesha gave me 10,000 last, last Sunday. Did I call uh, Osha, well, Mrs. Jones, and say, Mrs. Jones, please come. Come and collect this 10,000. When they give them envelope, you see them there. They don't, some of them don't show me. <laughs> we are, today is a day of talking. When they give them envelope, they don't, they some mention. As I was in the naming ceremony, I was given an envelope. An envelope. They won't tell me the content. <laughs> that is if they are honest enough. It's a temptation. What of if you show him and he collect it? <laughs> eh? So if you don't send people to help you collect the prophet offering they gave you, why should you send people? Why should you find it demeaning or not right to collect for God from the people? And me, I, when I had it, I had them, they were discussing. It's normal. A disciple don't understand everything. But what we are saying, ask with a genuine heart. Go to Leviticus. You are, do you know who raised me? The man who raised me is a walking Bible. Go to Leviticus chapter 2. Who collect offering? The priest. Sin offering. Even the, the arrogancy, there is an offering they call the arrogancy of the woman. <laughs> you don't know. The, sorry, the jealousy of women. <laughs> it is a priest who collect it. You know why we allow you, some of you to collect offering? All those of you are not pastor. You know why we allow you? At salvation, you were made a priest. I can walk you through it. Number two, why will I send my staff? They are my pastor. They are the most senior staff. They are the most senior staff of the ministry. They are the most senior. Do you know who collect of who keep the money of Jesus? He's one of the most senior. Go and check his reputation. Before he became a thief, he was a tax. He, he was a man who knew how to keep money. He sniffed money. He was the kikuyu in uh, Jesus' ministry. You know, a kikuyu man don't waste anything. You are aware? They will sell and sell and sell until nothing is sellable. 
So Jesus, when Judas saw oil being poured on leg, he said, no, oil should be sold. Mm. <laughs> it's a Nibo in Nigeria. It's a Kikuyu or, or Mukamba in Kenya. So Jesus didn't put the money in the hand of, in the hand of Thomas because he wouldn't doubt. <laughs> he gave, so I asked them to take offering because they are the most senior, they are the most reliable, and especially of late. How many usher do we have in church? Sometimes you have service, no usher is here. Usher, am I lying? <laughs> no usher is here. We have uh, Wakil when he's happy. <laughs> and Elizabeth. And any one of you who volunteer. So, what do I do? I can bank on the pastor they will be around. So, it becomes handy for them to be the one collecting the money. Who told you that work work is, is, uh, is the best work? But you see what Uhuru said. You see, I said this is the first for, for agenda. He said, but my deputy is doing something else. He said it openly. He said, so I look for the man who can do it. There's nothing wrong, for those of you who have mama in the congregation, there's nothing wrong for a pastor to collect offering. He's the senior staff. Go and check your Bible. The bread were given to the disciple to distribute. Please, 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 please. Not crowd. You don't give your basket offering to a crowd. You give it to people you have trusted. Who also have jobs so that you don't make them to go and think after they have counted people's money. So kingdom service is all about what service is, is needed in that ministry. And you joyfully render it. In Act of Apostle, is that they appointed seven, seven this thing. When you have people who can do a job, they do it. When you don't have, you are available. Yes, yes. When you, if I have deacons, usher, who job are not disturbing or their education they are pursuing, I will give them the basket. But if I don't, what is all this man doing? I'm talking they are seated. It takes God for them not to sleep. So I give them busy so that they don't sleep. Praise God. I said praise God. There is no job I don't do in this church. Because it's not about title. It's all about your dedicated heart to God. You, do you know I'm a janitor in this church? Choir, who brought key for you yesterday? Before you get your keyboard. I am the one. Mama has gone to Salon. They call. Oh, church is not open. So I will now be like that and I'm a senior pastor. I become a senior fool. What does it cost me to dress up, shower and come here to give key? What does he reduce? He reduces nothing. It is a service needed at that hour and I'm available. Please be available for God. Be a Look, go and ask your children. You know why they know me? Those that we used to come down, when I'm coming, they want to greet me. Pastor Wally, sweet in one mouth, saliva in the other hand, and I will still shake their hand. So don't go to any service group to dictate to them, me, I, my skirt cannot be here. We are not interested in your skirt. We are interested in your service. And in serving, you have to wear the acceptable uniform in the house of the Lord. Praise God. I said, praise God. Don't you see me? They have ceremonial clothes. But when they are going front, they don't wear those flowers something. General don't wear. He wears his camouflage. He lie down, otherwise he will be short. Kingdom service varies from churches to churches. Let me go further. Kingdom service also varies from who is around and who is not around. Where you are and where you are not. I was assistant pastor to Bishop Aremu in a Loring, in a Loring, and that church is about 13,000 membership when we are there. Mama was not recognized as pastor's wife. Why? <laughs> Ask her what she was doing. And I'm number two. The structure there does not recognize her. The structure on the ground has no office for her. So, since she must serve, we look for a maid and mama joined choir. She was in choir 
throughout our stay in Elori. Don't harass anybody that you are pastor's wife. That is a title you made by loving someone. It's not a ticket to heaven. I've told you. In fact, when you call her mommy, that thing doesn't enter her head. Though. And I told her before I met you. I told her 1996. Mama, Mary Joy, you don't need angel to tell you he's senior my wife. Do you need a, a Holy Spirit or a prophet? So if you call her mommy, it's respect. Don't let it enter your head. You don't give birth to anyone. They know their mother. I preach it to her as she became pastor's wife. So when they call you mommy, 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 if you think they are delight, they will hurt you. Just know that it's emotion, you are emotional mommy. <laughs> when they are happy, mommy! But when they are angry, they know their mother in Kitale. <laughs> <laughs> whether you call me papa, whether you call me daddy, doesn't enter my head. Does it in any way? Whether, <laughs> I told you greeting me is wasting my time. I have enough problem. <laughs> so when I'm walking, I'm thinking. How are you, sir? You are blessed. You see, I have to stop now and, and smile. Even though the issue does not arise, smiling. <laughs> so it's a waste of time. I have to re rehearse. <laughs> so why don't you just let me be going? <laughs> Come on, say I hear. Uh, I, I hope you are hearing me. Choir leader, don't say they don't respect you. If they do, praise God. If they don't respect you, praise God. The rewarder is God. The rewarder is who? Is God. So remove all this small, small thing from your head. Then your life will flow in service. I get to so many places I don't write pastor. I just write Wally Joseph. When I want to confuse you very well, I just wrote Abiodun Joseph. There's only one in Kenya. And I go my way. Please understand this today. It's not about you. It is about your heart towards the kingdom. All my pastor, thank you for all your argument. All the congregation, thank you for all your castigation. But I have explained to you today. Wherever you are, when I gave back to delight, who was betting delight? I am the one. If you think I'm joking, give back and invite me. With your husband in consent. If I bet your baby, that baby will never have order. Because I know how it comes. So I, I will now be bringing my mother from the village. Nonsense. Put on my short knickers and, and put on my vest. Put on my lap and begin to bet her. And I don't bet with uh, socks. That's why some people are smelling forever. Because their blood dry on their skin. No perfume, no cologne can remove it. The mother is here if I'm lying. So where you are, where if there is no security, go and be security there. Go and be security there. This is not a place to popularize you. This is a place to popularize God. And God made it clear, if you don't love men whom you see, how can you claim you love me? How, if you can't serve Jeremiah, how do you say you are serving God? You can't live in your cocoon of tradition. This is a Luo. This is a Kamba. Then I'm not fitting because I'm none of that. A man asked me last week, he said, I'm sure you have many Nigerians in your church. I said, on the contrary, I don't think they are there. I only have Pastor Philemon's family to my best knowledge. Because it's not a gathering of cronies. It's a gathering of people whom God have touched their heart to be here. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. The Lord will see you through. And, and the man asked me, why is, it that most, why is it that you don't have all in Nigeria? I said, very few of them can be comfortable in our church. Because I will talk about drugs. I will condemn it to the highest because I don't wish it for my children. I don't care how many tithes you pay. Your tithes can't take God to be God. He's already God. Praise God. I said, praise God. One of them got angry many years ago and said, uh, Pastor Wally talks so many things. 
I told his friend, go and tell him. Pastor, Dan, tell him. I have ne I'm in Nigeria. I've never seen drug eyeball to eyeball. So that he's selling won't close my mouth. I'm a bad man that gift can't cover my mouth. He didn't listen. Number one, 34,000 US dollars was taken in his house. Number two, he was caught. He disappeared to Tanzania. And you know when Tanzania arrests you for drugs, you're as good as dead. Because there will be no detail of hearing. <laughs> no date of what? So he says, when they hear it, they take plea. Tanzania won't bring you. You will get rot in there. So kingdom service is not about me. It's not about my family. Sometimes I leave here, I'm going to my lady. Mama will say, call. Last week, you see, I should call Wamalua. I said, no, Wamalua has a car. After Sunday service, we like to pick one or two businesses. Then suddenly, Kyogura appear. I will, I will talk to you with consent, value. I said, Kyogura, what are you doing? He says, I'm going to sleep. I said, is the sleep very important? <laughs> he started laughing. He said, no, sir, I just don't have... I said, okay, can you take me to Malindi? Okay, he said, yes. I said, let's go. You are not a slave. You are not a member of this church for me to throw my body on you. Were you, were you the one who asked me to give back to four children? Where was I looking? So I carry my cross. Many of you don't know my house because I don't encourage it. Don't want to enslave anyone. I'm to serve you. I'm your, I should be your greatest servant. That's why I don't crave for your numbers. Because if you need me, you will look for my number. Praise God. The Lord is on your side. I should live here today. Have this understanding. Wherever you find yourself in Europe, study the ministry and contribute. You are a value adder. Everyone that is born again is a value adder. But if you don't understand that the kingdom is not about you, you will pick offense in everything. In everything. If you don't understand, you will pick offense in everything. Whatever I do here, I do it with joy. I have it in my mind. I will not live in Kenya forever. So, where am I taking this building to? Can you carry the, the, the house into a car? So, they are for you. They are for your children. They are for your cousin to come. So, why do you destroy the work? What do we do? Yesterday, a, a senior general in Wina went to be with the Lord. One of the bishops. And they post, they post his uh, photo at a, after our prayer. At around six, I saw the photo. Two people have commented. By, by nine o'clock, over 1,000 people have commented. That's a life that is speaking. Please make your life to count. Don't cry for bread and butter. The one you ate last year, where is it? As you partake of this communion, you receive grace that was upon our Lord Jesus Christ. When we ask you to take offering for us, please, no matter how I said, don't think I'm demeaning you. Is that if me so good to say, I will give our offering basket. Because I know he has reached a level he can't steal. Oh, you don't know people steal offering? By my spiritual, yes. The man stuck about $5,000 inside our socks. In Lagos. But he thought we are fools. All of you count. I see you when you are counting. You didn't see camera in your studio. <laughs> Sit down there. Hmm? Judy, I see all of it. I see there is a camera where they are counting. <laughs> Do you think I'm a fool? Do I dress like a fool? I can rule your nation and there will be no corruption. Oh, this one, they say somebody eats 10 million on road. How? When I'm president. No, if I want to do road in uh, Kaloleni, I'm not going to bring somebody from Nairobi. There's no how a Nairobian can win the tender. It will be there. Be pick elder of Kaloleni as the management team and tell them to show, the, to show you their asset. If the road finish and you build a story building... <laughs> We don't need an angel to tell us that the contractor have kicked you back and front. You go and bring somebody from Kriyaga to construct road in 
in, uh, in Majauni. Why will the road be finished? Give few people some shillings and disappear to banana. <laughs> to banana. And settle down there. Bring the people that have the need of the road. Let them be in the management. Don't bring an MP. So I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. If there is a need here for my, my, my wife to collect offering, she will collect offering joyfully. How come you have a baby and you didn't give it to your house all the time? You are the one who keep the baby until the baby's neck is strong. Otherwise, you have albino as a child. Praise God. Every ministry, it varies. I'll be showing you in other services, even the ministry of Jesus was specified. Jesus said it by saying in John chapter 5. I think we can read that and close. John chapter 5. It's there. Jesus was, the problem people have with Jesus, they want him to behave like Moses. And he was not Moses. They kept on referring. Our father told us, Jesus said, I, what your father told you is what I have come to fulfill. I'm not going to behave like your father. But I'm, we are running the same course. Praise God. I said, praise God. All the choir people, please hear this and hear it. The uniform in your neck must suit the purpose. We know you have good waist. We know you have God has blessed you front and back. But we don't need it here. Is somebody hearing me? We don't need it here. That's why if you are not careful with your slim feet, I will make robe for you. <laughs> And I won't want to see. You know the robe? How many of you know robe? Choir robe. Nobody see your bum bum. Nobody see your breast. Nobody. <laughs> if I with mask, you'll be totally. <laughs> you, you will look like Saudi Arabia citizens. <laughs> or you think women, we don't want to leave our chest? We want to show you that we have six pack. <laughs> we can also show you we have hair on our chest. Tell the woman next to you, wait, wait, be careful here. <laughs> Why you think we don't have beauty on our chest? <laughs> you will see all manner of abuse. So men, you will count their rib one by one. Why do? <laughs> Come and say, I hear Papa. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. I saw one of my sons wear short knicker yesterday. He's the one on top of that machine. But God help him. I target to knock his head, but I think he was in prayer. <laughs> Who told you that people don't? But, but we come for a common goal. <laughs> we come for what? A common goal. When we finish, go and do what you want to do there. But as you are doing them, know that the Bible says, whatever you do, do it orderly. Praise God. As you partake of this communion, we receive grace to commune our life. Are you in my, on my scripture or you are angry because I also knocked your head yesterday? Now, John chapter 5 verse 30. Give me 30. What did he say? I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. You see why his judgment is just? He takes time to hear. That's why his judgment is just. Because it takes time to hear. Now what did he say? He said, because I seek not my own. My own will. Don't join a service group to establish your will. I seek, that is the greatest servant of all time. Jesus was the greatest servant of all. He said, I seek not my own. I seek not my own will. Why? He said, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So every servant, everyone that we serve, is to serve the interests of the ministry. The will of the Father is, a, is one of the will of the Father, is the mandate of restoration. This morning I was praying. In a, you see, many things I ask you to do, Pastor Daniel put pressure on me last two weeks 
So we need to start. We need to start on 25th of October in the month of celebration. Is hearing me now? In the month of celebration, we need to start uh, uh, the church Sunday worship. I said, okay, I will get back to you. Then after a while, he called again. And then eventually, just to relieve myself, since I'm not the one starting, I said, start. But if, as he's hearing me now, he knew that he was pushing. Because I wanted the corona to be over, then I go there and launch the church. I said, okay, if you think so, start. Don't push me to the point that I lead you that way. Be simple. Be flexible. I am not a witch. And you are not a Yamachuma for witch. So eventually I say, okay, start. On Saturday, they declare coffee in their state. <laughs> 24 hours. So there was no church. You may be taller than me, but you are not seeing what I'm seeing. You may be richer than me, but there are things God hide from you and show me. Now look at how amazing is it. So when I was praying with the two of them today, I said even when I was asleep and don't know what to do, God arranged the kickoff of those churches. Amazingly, Okunda started today. Hallelujah. And they also, they are starting today. So it was an eternal plan for the two of them to start on the same day. But sometimes you put pressure on me. You know when you put a, 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 a crap inside hot water, it will make noise. Let me lead you. And if you think I can lead you, don't waste your time. Look for where you can be led. Rather than making yourself a nuisance for no good reason. I serve as a nurse. I never had a confrontation with my boss once. You have your reputation. There is where you, 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 you dictate what happened. But when we come together like this, God expects us to come under the umbrella of our various service group leader. What a joy. The form are available for everyone that want to serve and where you want to serve. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? So that as I'm co continuing this series, you begin to pick form. You begin to belong to where you want to belong and begin to grow steadily there. It is well with your soul. As we partake of this communion, I also want you to know as we are getting to end of the year as a ministry, we begin to emphasize the ordinance because more people die in December than any other month. You can see now vividly that it was not Satan killing us in Kenya. During COVID, did you hear many people die? Naturally, from October, accident upon accident. Buses stopped traveling in the night. And the death remain. The, 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 the bus crashes drop. So as we are getting to the end, you are going to you are going to Machako. That is a good intention. But it will not take only your intention to get there. What of the driver driving you? That's why you need preservation. Somebody say he fell. The machine was damaged. Flesh wasn't damaged. Is that not God? Which one is softer on the, on the road? I think it's the skin. So as you partake of this communion, begin to believe God that your life is preserved. Engage your anointing. Anoint your house. Carry out ordinances. The end of every matter is better than the beginning thereof. Satan understood that. That's why the highest number in most nations that die, they die between November and December. Because somebody is highly drunk and that's why he has to drive to Machakos. You will not lose your life. Amen. I commit you into the hand of God that is wider to keep you. Amen. To keep your family. Amen. To keep his blessing that he has given you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every one of you and your household no hospitalization I want to remind you it is no man who have kept you during the corona as they are talking about is coming back it's not coming back for you because when he was in his full strength he couldn't lay hand on your children he couldn't lay hand on you the hand of God that has been protecting you is not shortened. You will not lose your boys. You will not lose your girls. You will not lose your children. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful father. Thank you, I am that I am. And as you are sprinkled today, a man testifying, he was in no court, he was testifying about a church. He said, we came severally, we couldn't enter because we see the fire of God. By the blood of sprinkling today, wherever you go, wherever your business is, every intention and every movement, God that has kept you for eighth month, he will not keep you for Satan to come and feast on you. As you are sprinkled today by the blood of Jesus, the testimony of Paul will be confirmed in our life. He said, I bear in my body, let no man trouble me. Let no man trouble me. And as you partake of this communion, you are getting out of the realm of offenses in serving people. From today, you are dead to serve and alive to kingdom service. You are dead to serve and alive to kingdom service. We receive fresh baptism to put our own aside. I was looking at Ben, Mrs. Ben yesterday, and I said, God, give everybody that serve in this kingdom that kind of heart. Saturday is the most precious day for beauticians. But what of other days? The God you recognize is the God that recognizes you. I pray for every one of you. It will no longer be about us. It will be about this kingdom. It will be about our fulfillment. Self is dead today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self is dead today. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are crucified to him. In the name of Jesus. The kind of humility that was in Jesus. That he could stoop low to wash the feet of the disciple. Let it come upon every singer in this ministry. That they will not say one of the reasons why I didn't join the choir. Is the uniform every week. God be with you every day. What of wearing a cloth for him for a day? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all the believers, class teacher. As someone have disciple you, it will dawn on you, you need to disciple order. All the businessmen and women, the works of your hand will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. The communion you are taking is for attraction. You will attract your own reward. Attraction, attraction 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 it take attraction to enjoy acceptability when you are attracted you will accept you'll be accepted and when men accepted you they have no problem in blessing you you shall be blessed the communion is blessed in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and as we partake of it we chase out every mark and appointment of death in the name of jesus christ in jesus precious name this is what go ahead there is power in the blood to heal and deliver, to sell the captives free. The blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood, power in the blood. There is. The blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the blood. There is power. Power in the blood. Power in the blood. The blood of Jesus. Better things than that of ever. The blood of 
forgiveness. There is forgiveness in the blood. Forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood that is forgiven. We forgive. We forgive and in the blood of Jesus. By the power of the blood. By the power of the blood. By the power of the blood. The blood of Jesus. That is healing. Healing in the blood. That is healing. Healing in the blood. Healing in the blood. The blood of Jesus. That is power. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Hallelujah. Bow down your head. Heavenly Father, we thank you again. We partake of your blood to replace the lifestyle we have. The Bible said the life of every flesh is in his blood. There was a blood that flowed in your vein that you laid down your, your life for the Father and for the sake of humanity. Father, grant us that grace that we'll be able to lay down our life for our generation and for the work of the gospel. Thank you, faithful Father. Receive praise and adoration. Starting from me, wherever ignorance have eroded my service, I am restored in the name of Jesus. You are restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of arrogancy, every spirit of self-centeredness, every spirit of self that may be residing in us, that make us think we are bigger than the work of God, Father, we remove such spirit in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Have you been blessed today? All right. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? But you are the one that has to go and collect it. So you will have pick one. Keep quiet. I didn't talk to Jones. Don't confuse him. Praise God. I said praise God. Well, for those of you who want to serve, the form are available with the usher. Pick it and fill it and get back to us as early as possible. Fill it, complete it, indicate where you want to serve, especially those who are joining new. Those of you who have been in one form of service group or the other, you may not need to fill the form. All you need to do now, strengthen your service with God. Praise God. I said, praise God. And I pray that spirit will drop upon you. The spirit of servanthood will drop upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to give our offering. Those of you paying tight, please come forward. You are paying your tight. Online, get ready to worship God with your substance. One of the things the children of Israel said while they were suffering, they said, we will go and serve the Lord with our substance. We will go and serve the Lord. They told Pharaoh, we will not even leave a hoof of our goods. We will go and serve the Lord with our substance. When your heart serves God, everything around you will serve God. You heard Joshua said, I and my household we will serve the Lord. I pray today, there is a burning in my heart. I want to see this generation serving God. So that we can reduce our frustration. So that we begin to enjoy the grace of God. Praise God. There was no business that could hold anybody alive in me. There was no business, I don't know the business if you know it, that could hold anyone, not even M Pesa. M Pesa was doing very well, but that is also the time the thief they come out with all manner of strategy and started stealing left and right. The only thing that sustained us was God. And this God is worthy of our service. And for those of you in the front, I pray for you 
that God of all faithfulness will accept your tithe, multiply it back to you, and fulfill the word he spoken concerning tithe. He said, we open the windows of heaven and pour you blessing. Your blessing shall no longer come in trinkle. It shall be coming, in, it shall be coming to you bountifully in the name of Jesus Christ. Your tithe is received in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth and enjoy open heaven in all that you lay your hands to do in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please drop your tithe. God bless you. This year is bound to be a year of harvest for us. There was nothing going on in many businesses and they were still giving. That's why I'm double sure that this month is your month. I can't hear your amen. amen. Now it's time to also give our offering. Online, those of you giving the offering, the bank detail has been displayed. M-Pesa number, pay bill has also been displayed. And I want to quickly admonish every one of us. In the time we are in, don't become crookish. Amen. Don't become what? Crookish. When you are not giving offering, that means you don't have. Amen. Is that simple? Why do you carry phone when you are not when you are not giving anything? The phone you are carrying is in my office. And there is a pay bill that print all who gave. Why, why do you play with God as if it's a toy? If you don't have money, that means you don't have. Nobody have caught your neck. That's why there's no gate of admission. It's your heart that is gate of admission. Some people will carry a phone. When we get to the offering, we don't see their name. I'm telling you life now. I don't know why people joke with God. If you multiply that attitude back to your life, don't you know you are in trouble? If you don't have, just keep, just keep yourself. And as I was saying it, I've not spoken. I them not mention because they will start attacking you now. One of the pastors says, Sir, Yes, at last Sunday, right? He said, Papa, I perceive there's something ongoing. That people lift up phone. And the Holy Ghost told me they have not given. I said, I'm aware. <laughs> if Ores lift up, um, uh, lift up phone and his name doesn't appear, do I need a prophet to tell me he didn't give? <laughs> and you know why God make us still small like this? So that all this attitude can be dropped. You come to a level on your own. I can't remember how many times I'm in service and what I want to give is not enough. And I give what I have and later money. You is between you and God. Let's leave this hypocrisy. If it is your phone, <laughs> lift it, amen. <laughs> Feel your 50 shillings. That's what you have. Give it. Please, understand God. Though. Understand God. There is nothing that is needed in the house of God that God is counting on me. He will give me the privilege and he will tell 7,000 people the same assignment. I was shocked last week. Okunda Church is starting. And uh, I was telling God, Lord, bless me so that we could buy them a keyboard to start with. That was my heart. I asked Pastor, uh, Pastor Afolabi, what do you have, what you don't have? But in my heart, Lord, give us money. We buy a keyboard and give them. It was just a hard desire. And on Monday, if it's Pastor Jones who gave me, I would say, well, Pastor Jones must have had my prayer. Or he may have seen the need. A pastor from another ministry. He walked here with one of the biggest keyboard. So I thought he wanted me to dedicate it. 
I said, Papa, I've just come to bring this keyboard. So I asked him, do you have another one? He said, well, we have another one, but it's a smaller one. But that's what we are believing God for. God said, go and sew it. God knows his work. Amen. The church is starting today. The keyboard arrived on Monday. It should be prophet offering for me. But you know I have food in my house. You will not see shame. Amen. Whatever I plead with you. Do you want me to kneel down for you? Whatever you are doing in your smallest corner, just keep at it. At your level and at your capacity. The Lord will see you through. The Lord will see you through. Before the church started, the keyboard was there. Yesterday they were fighting online. I'm giving you testimony now. They were fighting. They had the WhatsApp, Ukunda, Breakthrough Chapel. They were fighting. And that Beatrice was telling them, why do you start building church and without involving me? Eh, why? This thing you people are doing, he was fighting them. It's not good. Wafula, he was attacking for Wafula. Wafula said, no. <laughs> we want the children to satisfy them. We elder, we come in. I still have a bigger project. Because he saw that Jacinta saw the same and got angry and said, ah, you people are building, you didn't tell me. How much does the toilet cost so that I, we, be, we build it together? Wafula said, I've just spent 80000 to call 160000 Say, take my own 80000 I was told we're a Kesa family. So please, whatever you are doing, we are not competing, but be faithful and be honest with yourself. Don't do faith service. The one you are giving to is the one that have your heart. He know when you don't have. He know when you have. So why pretending? Just be yourself. Praise God. Lord, accept our offering. Receive it and use it for the advancement of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Use this offering. To open us to the door of our harvest. Let it be the stone that will trigger the falling, supernatural falling of our blessing in the month of November. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Choir, you are there? Okay, sing. God of miracles. You're my power. God of miracles. God of miracles, God of miracles, God of powers, God of miracles, God of signs and wonders, God of miracles. I say God of miracles, God of miracles. I say God of Rise up and celebrate. Oh God, a miracle. You're my papa. You're my papa. You are my papa. Come on, celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. He's our papa. I say you are my papa. What shall I do today? Today, I will lift up my voice in prayer. I say, What shall we do today? We say, Lift up my voice in prayer. What shall
So we do today, today. I say, I will lift up my body. For we do, for we do. Yes, you are. Stay at home. Almighty God. Almighty God. You are my all in all. He said, He said, no matter what I do, when the Lord comes my way, I will praise you. I say no matter what you do, no matter what, when the Lord comes my way, I will praise you. And what shall we do today? for all our children at home I bring them under the same covering in the name of Jesus Christ all our pastor that travel all our member that travel and those that will be traveling father whatever is put in your hand no thief can steal it their life will not be stolen on the highway in the SGR on the, in the air, you will preserve them. In the night season, in the day, at the, mot at the back of motorbike, inside tuk-tuk, wherever they go, O oh Lord, cast your shadow to protect them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. You will see the end of this year. Amen. You will cross to next year. Amen. This month is your month of divine harvest. I want to say to everyone, I can't see anyone here who doesn't have a harvest. You have fellowship with God. You have come to seek God severally. Some of you tithe. Some of you offering. Some of you kindness to your neighbor. <laughs> All that work cannot go in vain. Seed time. If there is a seed time, there must be harvest time. You will reap your harvest. I say you will reap your harvest. You will reap your harvest. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Is God good to you? Are you set for harvest?
Come and shout a shout of victory to open your heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Great service. Please take your seat. Hallelujah. God is a great God. We have one of us, one family that will be relocating back to Kisumu. Finally. I know you are not looking at my directions. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And today we'll be praying for them. We'll be praying for them. And uh, they are just relocating to go ahead of us. Amen. Amen. Since last year, negotiation has been on to start a church in Kisumu. Amen. So God is sending them ahead. I was in Kisumu on a visit to scan for property there. That was sometime at the beginning of this year thereabout. Praise God. I said, praise God. God, I was discussing. I was to go. I think the other one, I was not able to make it because of Corona. But God is visiting us. And so this family are relocating from Mombasa. They have been part of us from the inception. And what a joy that God is sending them ahead like he sent Joseph. And as they go, they have always seen the goodness of the Lord. They will continue to see the goodness of the Lord. They will continue to see the goodness of the Lord. It is my joy to call the, uh, the family of Brother Evans, Mr. and Mrs. Evans, as they come forward and then we pray for them. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. They are one of our leaders, elders and dignities, and today we'll be praying for them. And I'm sure you know them. Amen. And you wish them well. Is that correct? Please just come closer here. I need down here. Now stretch your hand and pray for them. Relocation is not an easy exercise. But God can make favor. Can add favor to them. And it will have been the best decision Amen. that they have made. I want you to pour your blessing upon them. Heavenly Father, I commit them into your hands. I ask you, Lord, as they go, your hand will go with them. Lord, you will guide them. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Nothing will be lacking in your going. He said, they got not the land by their strength, but because God added favor unto them. Lord, favor them on every side. Favor them on every side. Let it be a step of enlargement. Let it be a step of breakthrough. A, a step of peace. A set of abundance of all things. That you'll be saying you wish you have done this many years ago. I decree the gate of Kisumu. To be open unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. All the experience you have gathered in a bigger county. Let him give you an edge in that county. You will spread from there back to Mombasa again. You will spread to Nairobi and the environs in the name of Jesus Christ. It is with this we pray for you today for direction, for boldness, for a healthy life in the name of Jesus. I anoint your eyes. I anoint your eyes. He said, Eagle see is free from afar off. Receive the eyes of an eagle and begin to spot blessing from every angle in the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hand upon you. I have moved in my life and every movement has been a plus by the supernatural hand of God. Let there be extension of that grace. Go and grow bigger. Go and grow healthier. Go and grow bigger. Go and grow healthier. Possess your possession in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up with strength. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up with strength. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord go with you. The Lord favor you. The Lord keep you alive. He has kept you here. He will keep you over there. And wherever you are when I arrive. You vacate. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you see my, my, my poster like this. You are the first set of pastors there. So you migrate. Praise the Lord. You are on loan wherever you are. And we will not charge them. Praise God. As you go, you and your family, you will smile throughout the remaining part of this year. 
Wear your mask. You see mine is here. You mustn't be arrested that you are not wearing mask. We are law abiding citizens. Keep your sanitizer in your car. Somebody say, what of faith? The Bible say, he that keepeth himself, the evil one touches him not. Praise God. I said, praise God. Keep it everywhere. You must, I must not hear you are arrested for not putting on a mask. And make sure you have your sanitizer and go about your normal business. No evil will come near you. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Uh, join us in the second service, which is starting in the next five minutes. Sunday school ministry invite parents, their children, and teenagers to join online for the Sunday school and teen service via Zoom. Zoom up after the second service. Praise the Lord. Empowering your week, Money Glory live streaming service we hold tomorrow. We are starting on a new topic. Join us on time. Praise God. I discovered the day is breaking uh, so early these days. So we are also trying to maintain to close early. Because when the day breaks, you start afraid of getting to work. Praise God. So join also on time. There are too many late comers. You know I see you when you are joining. See you. I see you. I know when you join. Praise God. And some come late so they will not comment. But I will still see you. Praise God. <laughs> Starting point to breakthrough classes. Monday at 5.30 and on Saturday 1 p.m. All of you that are mature Christian endeavor to take advantage of this to join believers class teacher so that you can impart grace. It's also an avenue to serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kingdom steward form are available there. It's just a sheet of paper, one form. Get it filled and tell us where you want to serve God. Tell us where you want to serve God. We are open. Amen. A woman said to me some years when we were building when I said, Papa, I cannot slash. Because he saw me slashing glass. He saw mama slashing glass. Grasses. He said, me, I can't slash. I tried last Saturday. My hand is like they put stone on it. I said, okay, what do you want to do? He said, me, I can't slash, but I can fetch water for people from home. Cold water. When they are tired, they will come and drink. And she went and looked for ice block. I don't know where she got. And she stayed under the mango tree and serving people. It's irresponsibility that make one not to see anything to do where he's being served. And then as he did that, another man said, me, I'm so fat, I can't. I can bring orange every, every Saturday. And he was buying bag, 50 kg of orange, pour it down. And one person came, removing the pill and serving people. Whatever area you want to serve, even if you want to do hairdressing for the woman, we will build a saloon for you. <laughs> Whichever capacity, but not abusing people, not murmuring, that's the only service group that is not available. We don't have department of murmuring, department of complaining, but whatever thing you feel you can do to advance the kingdom of God and find fulfillment, you are most welcome. Pick your form. Ushers, are you with the form? I must see you greeting till the form, the people pass. Be asking them, amen. As you go, God go with us. Amen. God go with us. Amen. Be full of expectation. How many of you have come for service this year? How many? Of, I think you are in one now. Yes. How many of you have attended service this year? Yes. How many of you have given offering this year? How many of you have paid tithe this year? How many of you have fed the family this year? Yes. Then you are entitled to harvest time. Yes. Your harvest will come. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you fellowshipping with us for the very first time, today is your first Sunday service with us. Let me see your hand. You are joining us for the very first time. Just wave your hand where you are. Today is your first Sunday service. Do we have anyone? Amen. Let's, somebody lifting up his or her hand? Alright. Let's share the goodness. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. The Lord God is our son and our shield. He will give us grace and glory. No good thing will leave we hold from us as we walk uprightly. We are restored to power, to dominion, to honor, and to dignity. Amen. God bless you. See you during the week. May the peace of God be with you.